Howdy, welcome back to the shop. Hey, we're working on the Grizzly G0769 machine tonight. And uh, this machine has got some, well, I'd call it a design flaw, maybe not from Grizzly's point of view, but from my point of view, it's, it's not a very good design. This takes a little bitty, where'd the fuse go? This takes a little bitty fuse, and I mean a little bitty fuse. The main fuse is like a 10 amp, and these these little uh, secondary fuses, one protects the, the lathe drive motor, and the other one protects the milling machine drive motor, and you can see how little bitty teeny tiny them fuses are. Well, these little boogers are like seven bucks a piece. Uh, a box of these fuses cost uh, about the same amount of money as the whole project tonight. So what I'm going to do is replace these little bitty hard to come by uh, the motor supply or electric motor rewind house here in town has actually got these until I bought them all out. Uh, they had these little fuses but they are hard to come by and they are expensive. So we're going to change all this stuff out and we're going to switch this thing over to use uh, standard automotive style blade fuses. Now I will say this, if you live in somewhere where there's a lot of safety Nazis like Red China or California or Illinois, you know, one of those communist places, don't do this because this doesn't even near meet any kind of uh, safety code or anything what we're gonna do. For one, you can't mix AC and DC in the same space. Uh, for two, I don't think these fuses are rated for 250 volts, and uh, your line voltage is 120. You basically you have to be rated for double your line voltage. Uh, so this is not code or anything like code, but we're going to do it anyway because this is Missouri, and you're still allowed to kill yourself and be stupid here. So let's get on with the project. All right, so I'm, I've decided I'm going to run some 440 bolts to hold this down. The main reason is because that's the first size that I found that would fit in the hole. So I'm just going to kind of hold this up here, eyeball it, drill a hole, put a bolt in, drill the other hole, and bolt her down. So we'll see how this goes. bolt them down we'll be back in a minute so we got the box mounted now as I took these apart I took and paired the wires kind of in the product uh, process of you know in the better days through better ways even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us through the struggles of former years I have learned not to mix the stupid wires up. Uh, now, if I could just find the end of the black tape. Anyway, what I aim to do here is I will take one pair at a time and attach them across here and just solder them on with a little bit of heat shrink tube over the top of it. Uh, eventually, after I shock the fire out of myself three or four times, I'll probably make some sort of little cover to go around this. But we'll get these wires run through here and soldered on, and then we'll go from there. Are you being so here we go. We've got our 10 amp fuse on the top. Now that's 110 volt AC. And then we've got our two seven and a half inch fuses on the bottom. And those are fusing our 110 volts DC that runs the individual uh, drive motors. Now, I have left three spots in between open, 
just for the sake of a little bit of safety. And I heat shrunk, I soldered these leads onto the terminals and then put some heat shrink over them. And I'll probably make some sort of little covers to cover all this up, all but the fuses, after I shock myself on this three or four times. So if you want to look at the backside, let's look at the backside. So this here, the book calls this, I think something along the lines of a conditioner board. Um, I don't know exactly what it does, but this is your potentiometer and I think a potentiometer and a tachometer, I think are these two connectors here. And this is actually the uh, variable speed control or the DC drive, uh, DC motor speed control. So, and that's actually what it says right here. It says output zero to 90 volts at rated 13.5 uh, amps DC. So a seven and a half amp fuse ought to be plenty, uh, plenty big, uh, if it's 13 and a half amps, seven and a half amps is, you know, good enough. I might go all the way up if I could find, I think the originals were eight amp fuses up here. If I could find eight amp ATC style fuses, I'd probably use them, but these are so cheap, why fool with it? So anyway, I'll put this thing back together and we'll give her a test drive. Okay, I got a piece of inch and an eighth of aluminum in here. It's just soft aluminum. I don't know what the alloy is. My feed is about eight thousandths per revolution. And let's take a 40 thousandths off the diameter cut. So it'd be 20 thousandths depth of cut. No problem. And we're running about five, six hundred RPM right now. So there's another uh, 20,000 step to cut. That's 40. Boof. Okay, Drewy. So when we hit 40,000 depth of cut, 80 thousandths off the diameter, it popped the seven and a half inch fuse or seven and a half amp fuse. And I'm okay with that. At least I know where my limitations are. Like I said earlier, the original fuses in these were like eight amp. That's great. I don't care if I pop a lot of seven and a half amp fuses. Don't really care. The main thing is I'm protecting the, uh, the drive board and the motors and the wiring. The stuff I really don't want to mess up. And I will say that this is a reground tri, uh, triangle carbide, uh, and it's got a huge radius on the nose. And this machine, if you stall this machine out on these, you know, you're, pu you're pushing this machine as hard as it needs to go. So I appreciate you all joining me out here in the shop tonight. Uh, please subscribe and all that jazz. So in the meanwhile... Y'all drive so safe and watch for deer. Yep, drive safe and watch for deer. Bye. Don't get a hold of that. You're wiggling the camera. Oh. All right, go in.